Um, Bodak Yellow is the song of our generation, I just gotta say. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashton and welcome to the channel. As you might have guessed based on the title, I am a senior in high school and I am starting the process of applying to college. For me, starting this journey has been a gigantic learning curve, so I'm sure some of you are like me back when I started all of this junior year. Lost. Confused. Not sure what you're actually supposed to be doing. But that is why I am here to offer you a few tips. I'm going for a BFA in musical theater, so this will be a little more geared towards that and other similar performing arts degrees, but I'm sure you might be able to get something out of these tips even if you aren't a performer. Step one, organize. This is probably one of the hardest things for me since I am a naturally messy person, but I promise you the sooner you learn how to organize, the easier your life is going to be. I recommend purchasing a paper planner. You can see mine in some of these clips. Uh, this planner is literally the only thing keeping me from just drowning in my mountains of work. Um, and in fact, when I forget to write things down on the planner, they just, I completely forget about them. Um, like literally Tuesday, I had an appointment, but I didn't write it down in my planner. So I missed my appointment, which goes to show that the planners work. Some people like to use online planners like uh, the calendar app or Google calendar. And I've, tried those but honestly i don't think they're that effective it's like it's scientifically proven that if you write something down you're more likely to remember it and i am definitely a believer in that after only using the paper planner for a, about a few months i mean since school started also it helps if you prep for the next day the night before for example i have dance rehearsals at school a lot of the time and i need my tap shoes so i would put those in my backpack the night before because i'm guaranteed to forget the morning of if you're anything like me you'll want to wake up as late as you possibly can so you probably won't even have time to remember because you're out the door 20 minutes after you wake up next bear with me i know this is a long step one do things as early as you possibly can I have 21 applications to submit, plus pre-screens and transcripts and everything else, so I've learned this one well by now. Many musical theater applications require pre-screens, and you know what that means, waiting days for your videos to upload. Depending on what Dropbox you're using and your Wi-Fi network, it could take anywhere from 30 minutes to 5 or 6 hours to get these puppies uploaded. And you don't have that kind of time anyway, especially not if you waited until the night before the deadline to submit. I recommend giving yourself at least two days for upload times if you're submitting your pre-screens anywhere near the deadline. You don't want to risk it taking too long if you're grinding down to the last minute, which is why you should get your pre-screens in as early as you possibly can, just so it doesn't create extra stress for you. On to step two. Congratulations, you made it past the beast of a bullet point that was step one. Make the time to practice. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably asking, Ashton, when in the world am I supposed to practice when I have school for seven hours a day and then six more hours of homework and then rehearsal and then more applications? Well, you may just have to suffer a little bit. And I know that's not the answer most people want to hear, but that's just kind of what you have to do when you're trying to get into these extremely competitive programs because the last thing you wanna do is show up to an audition without feeling prepared. That is a disaster waiting to happen, no matter how good you are at winging it. So the short answer to when do you practice? Basically, that's whenever you can. That may mean cutting some of your breaks. Not fun, but that's your life as a performer. For me personally, my school allows us to eat snacks during class, so if I know beforehand that I'm going to use lunch to practice, I make sure to bring something simple for lunch that I don't have to microwave, like a sandwich or I make little little cracker sandwiches out of like pepperoni and cheese like you used to do with like Lunchables. Um, so I eat it the period before lunch and then I don't have to worry about like stuffing my face in two minutes after I've been singing. Uh, my choir teacher lets me use his room to practice and then sometimes the band teacher lets me use the private practice rooms because my school has those. So basically you just have to not be worried about mooching off your teachers. This is why it pays to be nice to them. Highly recommend that. Also, 
If you really examine what you do in a day, I'm almost positive that there is at least some moment of downtime that you are not utilizing. If you have rehearsals, and I'm sure many of you do, use those little moments of downtime to work on your applications where you can. And if you have some larger breaks, use it to practice and learn your material. One of the things I do in order to make the most of my time is mental practice. Now, some people do debate over whether or not mental practice actually works, but for me as a singer, I think it is incredibly effective. It may or may not work for you. I mean, I haven't talked to a whole lot of people who do stuff like this, but I think it works. Mental practice is really great for me personally because I can do it in places where I don't necessarily need to be belting at the top of my lungs, like study hall, the library, just the regular old hallway at school. <laughs> Um, also, if your parents still drive you at all while you're in the car, bust the rep book out and just go over the song in your head. It works, I promise. Just experiment, play around, see if it works, and you'll find out how to utilize all the downtime in your life and use it to practice. Speaking of which, after all that practicing, you need to do step three, relax. I know just hearing me talk about college applications is stressing you out right now, but this is honestly the most important step on this list. No matter how much work you're doing in a day, there has to be a point where you put it all aside and just unwind. I'm a workaholic. This is definitely something that isn't natural for me, but when I wasn't doing this and all I did was just grind every second of every day until I passed out at night, I ended up hurting my mental health big time. And that got in the way of my performing, which you definitely want to avoid with performances and auditions and everything else that goes into living your life. So what I recommend is setting a marker for yourself in the day that signals, okay, put down your planner, plug in your laptop, no more work until tomorrow morning. For me, that is after I shower. I try not to work in my pajamas and something about a hot shower just puts me in the mood not to do any more work after I get out. Once you've found that marker, you want to create activities for yourself that you find relaxing. This is the part that might take a little bit of experimenting. I figured out through trial and error that I really like doing face masks, uh, specifically the moisturizing ones. I just find them really soothing and they just make your skin feel so nice. So I try to do one of those uh, about once a week or even more if I feel like it, if I'm really stressed. <laughs> and another thing I do is I write. Now I've I've been a writer since the day I was born, but I write literally all of the time. I have to write papers for school, application essays, emails, whole bunch of other stuff. So I try to draw a distinct line between my personal writings and my school projects. Right now, I am working on a libretto for a musical that I cannot tell you about yet, but that is something that I really look forward to doing in the evening. Also, I've discovered that I really like sand like running my fingers through it, which is a little weird because I'm not very outdoorsy. Like I never even liked the sandbox as a child, but um, I ordered a Zen garden and I think that's going to be a really big help for me. There aren't a lot of clips of me using it because I just got it, but the way I, but how I've been using it has been really helpful for me so far. But basically um, you have to find those relaxation activities that have absolutely nothing to do with your college applications. And that is something you really need to prioritize as you go into this process. I would consider relaxation to be one of my top priorities after my applications. And that is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. The secret is to compartmentalize, take it one day at a time and do the best you can in all of it. Remember where you come from, and why you're doing this. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to this channel. I love you all.